Let me follow up on the foreign policy question. I know you'll give us a readout at some point, but obviously the president goes into these calls with an expectation of what message he wants to deliver. So what is the president's message to the Ukrainian president today as we witness this continue uh, buildup of troops along the Ukrainian border of Russians? Well, I would view this call uh, as part of regular engagement with the Ukrainian government. With the Ukrainian government, this will be the third time the president and uh, and President Zelensky have spoken in just the last few weeks since December. Uh, they'll discuss the latest diplomatic and deterrence efforts with Russia. The president will reaffirm the United States' commitment to supporting Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, and our commitment to nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. But this is more of a check-in call than it is a call where there is a specific announcement being delivered. Has the White House changed its assessment? Has the Biden administration changed its assessment that a Russian invasion is imminent? Well, I would say that we have said since last week uh, that we have seen preparations and buildup at the border uh, and that an invasion could come at any time. Our assessment has not changed since that point. And then can you just talk about last thought on this topic, which is one of the complicating factors here is that Russia is now surrounding Ukraine from a variety of different places, right? They're not just on the east, they're on the north, they're mm -hmm. on the south as well. They're in in Belarus. So yeah. can you describe how that complicates the decision-making process now or what challenges that poses for you? And just the fact that they are now in a third country in Belarus, what message that sends to the United States? Well, I would say there's a couple of uh, a couple of ways we look at that, Peter. One is, uh, as you know, we're continuing to strongly encourage U.S. citizens who are in Ukraine to depart Ukraine uh, because we uh, watch closely. And while we don't and we're not predicting what President Putin may do, we certainly are watching closely the uh, buildup of tens of thousands of troops on the border and also um, the fact that we want to ensure there are ample ways for American citizens to depart Ukraine uh, should they should they decide to leave Ukraine. We're certainly encouraging them to do that. Uh, the second uh, the second impact I would say is that uh, we're in close consultation with our European partners uh, about their own security concerns uh, and uh, certainly in close consultation with them and our NATO allies who are in the region and in surrounding countries about what security needs they have. And uh, that is something they are watching closely. As you know, we announced just a couple of days ago that we have 8,500 troops at the ready as part of a NATO force. That would be a decision made through consultation in, in the NATO alliance, uh, not by the United States. But uh, certainly, they're all watching uh, the uh, buildup uh, and the movements of troops by the Russians. The number remains 8,500, though, for us for today. Correct. Okay. Um, I would point you to the Department of Defense if there's any updates, but not that I am tracking any changes in that front.